Light and peace in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, you brought forth a royal branch from the ancient stock of Jesse's line. Grant that we who have been grafted into this heritage may bear fruit worthy of Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Citing Psalm 12, found on page 3. Help me, Lord, for there is no godly one left. The faithful have vanished from among us. All speak falsely with their neighbors. With a smooth tongue, they speak from a double heart. Oh, that the Lord would cut off all smooth tongues and close the lips that other proud boasts. Those who say with our tongue we will prevail, our tongue we are our own. Who is Lord over us? Because the needy are oppressed and the poor cry out in misery, I will rise up, says the Lord, and give them the help they long for. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver refined from ore and purified seven times in the fire. O Lord, watch over us and save us from this generation forever. The wicked prowl on every side, that is, which worthiness is highly praised by everyone. 
Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long should I have in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long should my enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God, and give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say, I have prevailed over this one, and my foes rejoice that I have fallen. But I put my trust in your misery. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord who has dealt me richly. I will praise to the name of the Lord most high. Psalm 14, found on page 4. Fools say in their hearts there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. The Lord looks down from heaven upon us all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is anyone who seeks after God. Everyone has proven faithless, all alike have turned bad. There is none who does good, no, not one. They have no knowledge, those evildoers, who eat up my people like bread, and do not call upon the Lord. See how they tremble with fear, because God is in the company of righteousness. Their aim is to confound the plans of the afflicted. The Lord is their refuge. Oh, that is Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. And the Lord restores the fortitudes of this people. Jacob will rejoice, and Israel will be glad. Salutifix. Make of us the dust of the stars and the dust of the earth, holy mud, that we may apply ourselves to the wounds of our neighbors. Make of us holy mud. Make of us holy mud that we may apply ourselves to the wounds of our neighbors. My friends, our neighbors are wounded. This is a year of wounds. As you well know, over a million people are falling ill with the COVID virus every week in our nation. The positivity rate in our state of Massachusetts is 4.6%. Neighbors are losing their restaurants, their jobs, their savings. The wounds of racism and sexism, of homophobia and xenophobia, tear at the spirits and impact health in devastating ways. And almost 10 months into this time of disruption and social distancing, another wound is very apparent that is the wound of loneliness. Loneliness is a wound in and of itself, and it leads to other wounds. Dr. Vivek Murthy, the former Surgeon General and now a member of President-elect Biden's leadership team combating COVID, recently spoke about the impact of this year, and he called it a possible social recession. He said, a social recession, if you will, marked by deepening loneliness, more distant ties, and one that will have a profound consequence for our physical health, our mental health, and our productivity in the workplace and at school, a consequence, I think, that ultimately will rival 
the economic headwinds that we're facing. Now, I'm not an immunologist, and I'm not a public health officer. I'm not a senator. I'm not a cabinet member. And I'm guessing that few of you who are listening to my words are any of those things. But in this time of great anxiety, when the wound of loneliness is so prevalent, we have such important holy work to do. We can be holy mud to salve the wounds of our neighbors. Dr. Murdy suggests that we take a path of social revival and use this COVID pandemic as an opportunity to step back and to take stock of our lives and to ask ourselves, how can I double down on the relationships that I have with other people? For example, he says we could take 15 minutes a day right now to reach out to people that we care about whether it's calling them on the phone, or Zooming with them, or putting a note in the mail to them. Hey, I'm thinking about you. I care about you. Doing that consistently can be a powerful lifeline for another person. And when we turn outward, we are not only alleviating the suffering of other people who are lonely, but we make space for God to salve our wounds. Dr. Murdy explains it in this way. When we experience loneliness, for evolutionary reasons, we enter into a state of stress and threat. Our attention focuses inward. But we also become hypervigilant and perceive more threat around us. When we're lonely, we feel like we're not likable or that something is wrong or broken about us. But when we step outside of ourselves, turn our attention outward and serve other people, when we reach out to them and connect with them, we actually break that downward spiral of loneliness because we shift the attention from ourselves to someone else. And we also reaffirm to ourselves that we have value to bring to others in this world. So, write a note, make a phone call, wave at your neighbor, volunteer, be holy mud. It is our vocation in this time. Loving God, salute fix, make of us the dust of stars and the dust of the earth, holy mud that we may apply ourselves to the wounds of our neighbor. Make us like Jesus, who poured himself out for us. Amen. Let us affirm our Advent affirmation of faith. I hear a voice in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. I believe every valley should be lifted up, and every mountain and every hill may be low. I believe the uneven ground should become level, and a rough places a plain. I believe the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. This is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, who gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. I believe those who will wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint.
almighty, everlasting God, let our prayer in your sight be as incense, the lifting up of our hands as the evening sacrifice. Give us grace to behold you present in your word and sacraments, and to recognize you in the lives of those around us. Stir up in us the flame of that love which burned in the heart of your Son as he bore his passion, and let it burn in us to eternal life and to the ages of ages. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. May the Son of Righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And the blessing of God Almighty, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit be with us this day and 